This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. The British public over the recent past to watch the progress of a remarkable, beautiful bird, the Avocet. In fact, it's become the symbol of the RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. We'll update the Avocet story so far and in particular show how the home of such birds has been improved or otherwise by us and our activities. This is a story as told by Tony Soper, a coastal expert if ever there was one. As they move upstream together and the estuary fills, the avocets get more and more concentrated. And now the birders can really see the results of years of protection of this symbol of the RSPB. The flock has steadily grown to more than 400, the biggest wintering flock in Britain. High tide again, another flood has gone and is coming back. As the sun sets, our avocets will move to the wet meadows where they'll roost. Beyond those protective walls, the avocet cruise heads back to Exmouth. In a few weeks' time, the avocets will start drifting away, escaping this tidal regime that drives their lives from Topsham down here to Exmouth, itself driven by that other great power above us, the moon. They'll head east, right across England, and as we follow them we'll see how, as on the X, we shape the places they depend on, sometimes to their benefit, sometimes not. Our pair arrive in Dorset. Here, much of Poole Harbour's long, very indented shoreline is wild and empty. No trains, no traffic. There is a castle, though, the famous Corfe Castle in the distance, plus some very useful horses. They are the local gardeners, pruning the gorse which supports insects and hides rare warblers. They help maintain the heathland that surrounds the creeks where our avocets will rest and feed on the journey eastwards. This whole area is a wilderness of ancient heathland, damp woods and lonely marshes. But as with the use of grazing animals, it has to be maintained and protected. like this. She's thinning out the pines to encourage more heathland. Heaths were largely man-made as the forest was cleared from the Stone Age onwards. 82% of the heathland of 200 years ago has now gone to other uses. But here on the RSPB reserve at Arn, some is coming back again, with a bit of help from its friends. It breaks the peace nearby, but the avocets are too busy refueling and exploring the opportunities in this corner of the still wild pool harbour to notice. Trees, or the lack of them, are a key to this place. It's a serious gardening job, managing a nature reserve. And as spring arrives at Arn Village Church, so does another challenge from this fast-growing bit of the public, the RSPB membership. How to manage them as well as the place? What about their dogs, their cars, their litter? How to win them and not lose them? 
The staff have learned how to inform, how to guide, how to limit, how not to disturb. How to effectively show off their beautiful gardens and their beautiful birds. And then he's gone, on his way further east. And the rest. To something entirely different, apparently towards London. But it's beyond London, where the fruit trees and iron blossom, and on the distant North Kent marshes by the Thames. The local conditions are just right for arriving avocets. Ideal B&B, &B, RSPB made, shaped and flooded. But it's not as easy as that. What's going to wash down to those specially made ponds where the avocets feed and perhaps may nest? The farmer wants a good crop. Has he done a good job? The answer will be seen in the success, or not, of the fruit and the avocets. There are other indicators up there. On Northwood Hill, there are lots, though fewer, herons nesting, and the warden is checking for this year. Herons have been monitored in a national census by the British Trust for Ornithology since 1928. They form an important link between different worlds, from the woods inland to the river fields where sheep grazing maintains the landscape, via that water in the ditches. If it's polluted, they can, like all water birds, be contaminated through the food chain. And it could affect the sheep too, and our avocets. So, as the herons loaded with fish from avocet country down below bring home the catch of the day, they become indicators. How the breeding goes could tell the RSPB researchers a lot. Research on all sorts of birds is now a big priority for the RSPB. Ever since Silent Spring and the warnings we got from birds of prey poisoned by farm chemicals, they've watched birds in careful ways. As they say today, for birds, for people, forever. And that very much includes the avocets some which stay and may breed here. Even the government is helping. The farmer, that powerful but insignificant looking item in the landscape, is paid to farm sensitively in certain areas. In this place that can extend up to the hilltop where the gorse flourishes and young oaks unfurl their new brown leaves as spring moves on. This country spot, not far from London, is not only reserved for birds, but for many human visitors too. And they can watch herons in the trees above. Or avocets on the fields below. But for many of those avocets, not for long. It's on again to their favourite breeding place on the east of England. Below the castle lies Havergate Island in the River Ore. John Partridge and his father before him, Reg, have wardened this place assiduously. To them, the avocet has been more than a symbol, it's been a way of life. So as soon as the new birds return, he's out there to greet them. And they seem pleased too, lots of excitement. Time to get started.
Havergate is the classic place for avocets. They used to breed in England, but were wiped out by drainage, egg collecting and shooting. More than a hundred years later, in 1947, they came back here. And they've kept on coming back, despite their home being wrecked by storm and flood. With that delicate beak, they may look vulnerable, but it turns out they're real survivors. But those gulls, small black-headed gulls breed on the same island and may compete for best sites and kill avocet chicks. In the past their numbers had to be reduced, more management, and there's now a healthy balance. But bigger gulls are a much bigger problem and a quick changeover of brooding is essential. The eggs, though well camouflaged, make a nice snack for the larger black-backed gulls. And she knows it. The gull spots nothing, just an avocet sitting there. Later, it's different, visible though sort of camouflaged and distinctly shaky. Take cover. That's number one. Where's number two? The parents attack the gulls. Panic's over. They've been driven off and the family can now relax again. But they'll be back. Out over there, another attack, but from a very surprising source. Adult avocets are attacking avocet chicks. Maybe a chick from another family got too close. Avocets do this, it seems, but despite it, their numbers continue to grow at Havergate Island thanks to determined maintenance of their island fortress. Overspill can fly just up the coast. There's room there for more avocets, but not many more cars. The warden here at Minsmere is very busy today with birders. It's a bank holiday. It's a fine day, and the avocets will be looking good. It's not just fancy birds like avocets the public respond to. In their gardens, on the bird table, in town, people become aware of them and want to be more connected. Hence the success of the RSPB. They queue to get into the hides. Some of the man-made islands in the famous Scrape are also crowded. Today's report says many chicks are out there, if you can spot them. On number 50, it seems the parent is searching too. Or is she just checking she's at the right house? Seriously though, avocets are doing fine. Not only here and at Havergate, but they're now spreading all over the place. 
and more are probably coming over from Holland, where they're also thriving under protection. What a great little symbol. But the way we live today produces new challenges. Bacon, in the form of pigs, is popular, and not only for human breakfasts. Those big black-backed gulls, aerial attackers of avocets, cash in on the pigs' food, and their numbers are increasing rapidly. Bad news for avocets and the RSPB. They'll have to work it out. And as summer ends, some will leave, heading back westwards. They may stop at various places en route, but there's one place in a different part of Pool Harbour they sometimes return to, Brown Sea Island. There's a big enclosed lagoon, tall trees, and a castle, sort of, again. The public can visit by ferry, and many come to see the red squirrels, isolated here from their grey competitors. From the always invaluable hide, they can see a returning avocet too. Perhaps one that passed this way a few months ago, carrying a ring that can prove it. Or the pair that may or may not have raised a family. This is a splendid piece of Dorset with heathland, beaches, fields, pine trees, and of course the perfect lagoon, with islands on which avocets will probably nest in the next year or so. And up behind it in the pines and amongst that unwanted invader, the rhododendrons, there's a heronry. But there's also this, the little egret also nesting. So the bird that started the RSPB because of the plume trade is now here at last on its own accord, a new British breeding bird. The egret has landed. Avocets away. Back to Devon and the X estuary, their favourite wintering place. Back to those lovely trains. To join the Brent geese, another species that's flourished in Britain, though its breeding grounds in the Arctic could be changed by global warming. back to Devon birders in their hide, keenly counting every bird on the beach. To make their day, the avocets drop in. So what is this pleasure? How do you explain the million-plus membership of the RSPB, and growing? Are that many people keen on birds? Well, when they see these things, as common as roosting starlings were, they enjoy them. When they hear starlings, thrushes, even sparrows and farmland birds are decreasing, they want to help. They hope that silent spring will never happen that the sky will not darken on the world of birds. And they know that that potent symbol, the avocet, and indeed the little eager, can be winners. But they need help, and fortunately, they're getting it. Moving on to today, it's become more and more obvious and important to protect the species and its home. Like the RSPB, the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust makes great efforts all around the country, like a new project at Steart in Somerset, not far from the controversial Hinkley Point. This is and will increasingly become an avocet paradise.
and also a great attraction to the public and cooperation with the farmers. TV's expert Miranda Krestovnikov is right up to date with our wetland story and flooding will be controlled. For me, Steart Marshes is just another example of what WWT does best, bringing wildlife and people together for the benefit of both.